Hello, I'm Dave Morphus with Telabs, and today we've got a special guest on Get Schooled, Carol Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Telephony Magazine. Welcome. Carol, I think where we want to start is describing why Ethernet is such a hot topic. Uh, certainly you've written about it um, quite a bit, and virtually any conversation you have in the industry, whether it's on uh, mobile operators or whether we're talking about the traditional network, uh, the LAN, the WAN, Ethernet always seems to come up. Why is it such a hot topic? You know, I think Ethernet is such a hot service because it's almost unique in being a win-win service for both service providers and their customers. And that's true because, first of all, Ethernet is a global standard, a widely deployed global standard for data networks. And that means it's going to look the same in China as it does in the U.S. And for a service provider that's serving multinational corporations, that means they can comfortably guarantee the service is going to look the same for their customers. And it also means from a customer standpoint, they know the look and feel of Ethernet. They're very comfortable with it because they've been using it in their local area networks for quite some time. And that's a big benefit to IT. IT departments. There's also the economies of scale associated with Ethernet. Because it is a mature technology that has been widely deployed for quite a long time now, the cost of customer premises equipment and even the cost increasingly of network equipment is, is much lower than for other some more um, traditional legacy services where the equipment is much more specialized. I think that, that that's a real advantage. And third, scalability is a major advantage for both service providers and their corporate customers. What we're seeing today is that the, the demand for bandwidth just continues to, to grow. And Ethernet is easily scalable into the gigabit range, which means you don't have to go adding a lot of equipment or you know, essentially doing forklift upgrades in order to increase the amount of bandwidth. You can actually do, in many cases, bandwidth on demand, which is you know, easier for service providers to sell more bandwidth and easier for their customers to get that bandwidth and consume it. We know about Ethernet and the LAN. It's a tried and true technology. Um, but one of the questions is, why is there this nervousness, or is there a real trepidation uh, for carriers to take Ethernet into the next portion of the network where traditional technologies like TDM and so forth have, uh, have proliferated? You know, I think there was a tremendous amount of trepidation when Ethernet first started coming to the public network. And I remember I wrote my first article on gigabit Ethernet as a public service back in the year 2000. So this has been happening for a while. I think there was tremendous trepidation then for some very good reasons. A lot of the early Ethernet equipment was not carrier grade. It came out of the LAN. It was essentially scaled up LAN equipment. It didn't have the five nines reliability. It didn't have quality of service, class of service capabilities. Now what we're seeing is more and more and more um, the, the folks who make or who do make carrier grade equipment have moved into Ethernet have, and have been, been adding on to what its capabilities are as a carrier class technology. We've also seen a lot of heavy lifting by standards groups and in particular by the Metro Ethernet Forum to create standards around this and to create deployment agreements and, and to be able to guarantee to service providers that when they deploy this Ethernet equipment it's going to do what they need it to do in terms of providing not only uh, a guaranteed level of service but class of service uh, the ability to, to back up service level agreements and all the things you would expect of a network, a true network technology. The second reason I think there was tremendous trepidation, and, and this to some extent is, is still around, is that the business models around Ethernet weren't clear. Early on, we saw a lot of folks jump into the market offering just a whole lot of bandwidth very cheaply, and some of that's still around. But for an incumbent service provider, that's a business case that doesn't work because they have to find a way to migrate their existing customers onto an Ethernet service without essentially cannibalizing all that revenue. So let's assume, as you said, that Ethernet has moved uh, from the land to a little bit more of a, a carrier type of, of technology. There have to be some competitive reasons, I would imagine, uh, why cable companies, why service providers, why mobile operators are moving towards more of an Ethernet environment. Can you talk about some of those competitive reasons? I think there are tremendous uh, competitive drivers for Ethernet deployment. One of, the, uh, one of the biggest is the fact that for incumbent telecom service providers, they're seeing the cable MSOs and competitive service providers move heavily and quickly into Ethernet deployment. Uh, cable MSOs in particular, now that they're very much uh, courting small to mid-sized businesses and, and regional businesses in, in, in their networks, in their areas, they're moving heavily into Ethernet. We've seen Cox Communications become the fourth largest Ethernet service provider in North America just within the last year, and they're adding ports very rapidly. I think we've also seen competitive service providers, often using very different business models, move uh, actively into Ethernet. You've got companies like Time Warner Telecom, Exo Communications. You've got companies like Cogent Communications offering 
uh, high, high bandwidth at low prices. So you've got all these folks out there courting you know, small to mid-sized through enterprise customers. And the incumbents really have to have their own services and well-defined services around Ethernet that meet the needs of, of the different customer segments. And mm -hmm. I, I think we are definitely seeing those incumbents step up as well. So the, the, the second major competitive driver is the fact that Ethernet enables large service providers to tie together a lot of access technologies. And any incumbent is going to have a diverse set of access technologies in its network at any one time. You know, we've got DSL, Frame Relay, there's still some, some other you know, T1 type services out there. Ethernet would give uh, an incumbent an opportunity to tie all these together. And that's important as they try to enable their corporate customers to tie their networks together and have a single uh, look and feel to the network, whether it's at the corporate headquarters or down at the smallest remote branch office. So I think competitively speaking, that's a major driver as well. As Ethernet grows, certainly we see it uh, pushing into some other technologies in the network, further and further into the network. So the question becomes, do we see Ethernet replacing some or all of the legacy uh, technologies in the network? Well, I do think we see Ethernet becoming the dominant service. I'm not sure I'd be ready to predict when it takes over everything. Um, the reality of legacy networks is that they don't go away quickly. There are going to be customers who want to keep that reliable frame relay service or that reliable T1 going forward because they don't see the reason for changing out. But I think increasingly Ethernet becomes dominant and it begins to push these other technologies you know, further and further into the background. The thing about Ethernet also to remember is that initially a lot of it was deployed over Sonnet and what we're going to see I think is Ethernet then displacing Sonnet as well and becoming a metro technology for transport as well as for access and, and at the service layer. So I think we're going to see you know, different types of Ethernet migrations and again, continuing pushing other technologies in the background, but in a, in a gradual way, especially where Sonnet's concerned and not, there are no flash cuts in the public network. What is the near term, what is the medium term, what is the long term hold for Ethernet? What exactly is the industry telling you? Well, I'm not sure I'm brave enough to predict what's going to happen in 10 years. Um, but I would say definitely over the next one to three years, we're going to see some ramp up and a lot of that's going to depend on video and how key an application video becomes. We are seeing video take off obviously in the consumer space but also in the corporate level as well and we're seeing internet video becoming a, a, a big application. Video consumes massive amounts of bandwidth and as video explodes that's I think going to rapidly ramp up the demand for Ethernet in order to meet that bandwidth scalability issue in every part of the network. The access network, the metro network, and the core network as well. So I think video begins to be a major driver for Ethernet deployment in the next three to five years. You mentioned video as a driver for Ethernet and clearly that's the case. What are some of the other drivers that are going to contribute to Ethernet's growth? Well, I think um, there are a couple of key other key applications besides video. One of them, of course, is mobile backhaul. And mobile backhaul is going to be a very hot market. As wireless carriers are developing more data services, they're seeing their bandwidth needs grow, go up, which means they ha their backhaul needs go up as well. And they are looking for cost-effective ways of doing backhaul because that's a major you know, cost center for them. I think we're seeing every kind of carrier, whether it's incumbent, cable operator, competitive service provider, all seeing mobile backhaul as a, as a target market for them. I think it's going to be a very hot, very competitive space over the next few years. I think we also see drivers from the corporate level, and I think I've touched on this earlier, but just to reiterate, more and more corporations want to be able to deliver bandwidth in a seamless way to, throughout, their, throughout their, their enterprise, whether it's the small branch office of a bank or an insurance agent's office or a medical facility, distributed medical facility. Those, those offices need to be tied into corporate headquarters with a service that looks very much like what the corporate headquarters is getting. And one of the things Ethernet does is enable that to happen. You can deliver an Ethernet service down to a remote branch office, and it may not be quite the bandwidth you're getting at corporate, but it's going to look be able to support the applications and look and feel very similar.